Much like in the 50s and the 60s, the space race is now once again at the center of global technological competition, involving government space agencies as well as private industry. As the sector expands, Japan is determined to play a leading role thanks to its new H-3 launch vehicles to compete with SpaceX's Falcon 9. The H-3 launch vehicle uses a new engine called the LE-9. The LE-9 is a liquid-fueled rocket engine that is designed to be more powerful and efficient than previous Japanese rocket engines. The LE-9 engine uses liquid oxygen and liquid hydrogen as propellants, which allows for a high thrust-to-weight ratio and good efficiency. It has a maximum thrust of about 180 tons. The engine is also designed to be more reliable and easier to manufacture than previous Japanese rocket engines, which should help to reduce costs and increase the frequency of launches. One of the key design features of the LE-9 engine is its use of a single combustion chamber and nozzle, which helps to simplify the engine design and reduce the number of components that need to be manufactured and assembled. This design feature also helps to improve the engine's performance and reliability. Sadly, the first launch of Japan's brand new rocket engine ended in failure, meaning that it can't beat the Falcon 9, at least not at this time. So what exactly happened to the rocket, and are there any changes that the H-3 can make in order to catch up with SpaceX's broomstick? All this and more in today's episode of Great SpaceX. The H-3 launch vehicle is Japan's trump card, a collaboration between Mitsubishi Heavy Industries and JAXA, the Japanese space agency. As the first generation of Japanese rockets to enter service in more than 22 years, it's meant to replace the H-2A series, which was introduced back in 2001. Compared to its predecessor, known for its reliability, which is only one launch out of 46 failed, the H-3 rocket should have a slightly greater payload capacity, but above all, lower costs. Launching an H-2A costs about 90 million US dollars, which is far higher than the 67 million dollar price tag for SpaceX's Falcon 9, so it's not quite that competitive. The new H-3s slash costs to around 50 million dollars. The development of the H-3 rocket costs about 200 billion yen, or one and a half billion US. The maiden flight of the H-3 rocket will have two LE-9 core stage engines, each producing more than 330,000 pounds of thrust, a third more powerful than the LE-7A used on the H-2A rocket. Future H-3 missions could fly with three main engines, allowing the rocket to lift off without the need for any solid rocket boosters. Engineers also upgraded the H-2A rocket's solid rocket boosters for the H-3 program, with the new SRB-3 solid-fueled motors on the H-3 rocket capable of generating 20% more thrust. Designers achieved cost savings by simplifying the connection between the boosters and the core stage of the H-3 rocket, and by using a fixed nozzle on the SRB-3 motor instead of a vectoring nozzle on the H-2A rocket's solid-fueled boosters. And the H-3's upper stage has a single LE-5B3 hydrogen-fueled engine capable of multiple firings in space. It's a modernized version of the LE-5B engine flown on the H-2A rocket. With a lower price, Japan envisioned doubling its launch cadence from about 4 to 8 missions a year. H-3 can be a big competitor with Falcon 9, but at first, JAXA and Mitsubishi must prove their reliability. This is where problems began for Japan. The first launch of the H-3 rocket aborted moments before liftoff. On that day, the H-3 rocket's two hydrogen-fueled main engines ignited about 6.3 seconds before liftoff, sending a plume of exhaust out of the flame trench at the Tanegashima Space Center in southwestern Japan. But the H-3's dual-solid rocket boosters did not light when the countdown clock struck zero. During the automatic countdown sequence of the rocket, the first stage vehicle system detected an abnormality and did not send out the solid rocket booster SRB-3 ignition signal. So today's launch was cancelled, the Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency said in a statement. 
JAXA officials did not provide any more details on the problem that prevented the 57-meter H-3 rocket from taking off. The launch team began preparations to drain cryogenic liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen from the two-stage rocket as engineers analyzed data to find the cause of the abort. The H-3 rocket's countdown was running on a computer-controlled sequencer, which checks numerous parameters in the final moments before launch to ensure engines, avionics, and other systems are ready for liftoff. In the days leading up to the launch, everyone was nervous over the rocket's new electronic components and engine for good reason. The first test was not completed because the auxiliary booster engines failed to ignite. For Masashi Okada, project manager of the H3 development team, the problem was not related to the engines but was most likely in an electrical system in the first stage. He refused to call the test a failure, saying that he hoped the problem could be fixed and another launch done before the launch window closes on the 10th of March. This is especially important since the H-3 is already behind schedule. The first launch was set for March of 2021, but technical issues related to some components postponed it by almost two years. The H-3 probably won't be able to catch up with SpaceX's Falcon 9, let alone surpass it. So far, relatively few commercial customers have signed on to the new Japanese rocket aside from satellite operator Inmarsat. This is partly due to delays in development and uncertainty over when the H-3 rocket would actually take flight. But another problem is that there are no clear advantages for this rocket over the Falcon 9, which has a very high reliability rating, with 170 consecutive successful launches since 2016. Moreover, it's not clear what price Mitsubishi is really selling the H-3 rocket for, nor whether it can yet match the scheduled reliability of the Falcon 9, which launches at least once a week. There is yet another, more fundamental issue. When Japanese engineers first began designing the H-3 rocket in 2013, they were not concerned about reusability. SpaceX would not land the Falcon 9 rocket for two more years and would not relaunch a first stage until 2017. However, as the development of the H-3 has dragged out into the 2020s, it has become clear that rockets without some form of reusability strategy will face significant challenges as they compete for commercial launch contracts in the coming years. This is not to say the H-3 rocket will be obsolete as it rolls to the launch site next time. However, so much has changed in the world of launch over the last decade that it probably will be one of the world's last major development projects for a fully expendable launch vehicle. But why is it that Japan's space is so outdated? The patriarchy may be a problem. For all of its quiet competency, efficiency, and technical proficiency, one area in which the Japanese government, industry, and culture seem to be struggling is the capacity for rapid change. When it comes to reusable spaceflight, Western companies such as SpaceX have lapped the rest of the world. What also seems clear is that such companies also have a head start when it comes to tapping the potential of the entire workforce, starting with SpaceX's president and COO, Gwen Shotwell. Other major U.S. aerospace companies are similarly led by women, including Lockheed Martin and rocket engine maker Aerojet Rocketdyne. The Japanese aerospace industry has ambitions of being a serious competitor with the likes of SpaceX and other private American space companies, but for rocket companies in the U.S., it clearly helps that women can build rockets too. This has been Kevin with Great SpaceX, and as always, if you enjoy what my team and I are doing, you can become a patron through our Patreon link in the description below. Otherwise, my team and I will see you next time.